Hello, my name is uh, Ever Barbero, and I'm reaching out to you today to introduce um, a web application called kdeck-online.com. So let's uh, take a look at what the uh, KDEC is. Um, according to Wikipedia, kdeconline.com is a multilingual web application that performs analysis of uh, composite materials. All right, so then let's take a quick look at uh, what are uh, composite materials. Um, composite material combines two or more materials, such as carbon fiber and polymer binder, to achieve performance superior to that of the constituents. So the constituents uh, are the materials that you use as the basis to make a composite material. In this case, the constituents are carbon fibers, that's the reinforcement, and a polymer binder, which we usually call the matrix. Uh, composite materials have uh, many advantages. For example, they are lightweight because the constituents are low density, like carbon fiber and polymer matrices. Therefore, the resulting composite is uh, low density, and that's a very big advantage for aircraft, space, and many other things. Uh, composite materials are flexible. You can make uh, rigid structures by structural design, but inherently, the material is flexible. In more uh, technical terms, what that means is that the strain to failure of the material is large. Actually, it's very large compared to classical materials, and that's a huge advantage, which uh, translates into materials being strong. That is, in terms of stress, uh, the material is very strong, are very strong. Also, these materials are corrosion resistant, and there are other, materi other uh, properties like fatigue life and so on, uh, that uh, make these materials very advantageous. Um, as a result of that, uh, composite materials are dominating many industries. For example, in the sector of uh, wind turbine blades, all 100% of uh, blades that you see out there are made out of composites. And talking about blades, uh, we can see in the next slide that uh, here's a, a picture that just came out. This is very recent. Um, this is uh, the longest wind turbine blade in the world. Uh, it's made by LM Wind Power, which is a GE company. And at 107 meter long, it's also the largest uh, composite structure uh, in the world. Mm, all right, so then um, if you want to uh, design uh, composite materials and structures, uh, then basically you have to follow two steps, preliminary design on the left, and uh, detail analysis on the right. Actually, for all structural design, you have to do these two steps, but more so for composite material because uh, composite materials are complicated, and therefore you need to do some preliminary calculations to make crucial decisions uh, about uh, your structure and the material that you're gonna use. Before you move into detail analysis, detail analysis is done with uh, software tools like Abacus, ANSYS, LSDyna, Genoa, Helios, DDM, stuff like that. This detail analysis software are based on finite element analysis. Um, the learning curve is pretty steep. Uh, the price of these tools are, is also steep. Um, and so you cannot just go call directly into one of these tools and try to put in what your idea is. You have to do preliminary design to iron out at least uh, crucial uh, issues that you have to decide before you go and you actually uh, do detail analysis. Now for preliminary design, uh, we have KDEC-Online, uh, which was designed and built uh, specifically for that purpose. All right, so next, um, we'll talk a little bit about composites, just the minimum so that we can use the software. So composite materials are made out of laminas. The lamina is a thin structure which if it's reinforced with fibers, uh, the, it will be called unidirectional. Now, most of the composite materials that are used are reinforced with fibers, but there are composite materials that are reinforced with particles. They are called particulate composites and other type of reinforcement, but the vast majority will use fibers. And the fibers are uh, embedded and bonded by a matrix, which most of the time is a polymer, although it could be a metal or a ceramic, but most of the time is a polymer. And so the first building block of a composite material is the lamina. The lamina has all the fibers oriented in the same direction. What you see there in the picture is a cross-section uh, of um, uh, e-glass fibers, which are circular, 13 micron diameter. They are enlarged for you to see. And these are inside a polyester uh, uh, 
uh, matrix. And as you can see, all the fibers have the same direction, which is pointing at you. The fibers are coming out of the screen, and that's why you see circles. Now, these materials have, um, laminas have a very extraordinary properties in the direction of the fibers because the fibers are very strong and stiff. So the lamina is strong and stiff. But in the other two perpendicular directions, that will be horizontal and vertical, uh, the properties are not bad, but they are not as great. So if we want uh, good properties in every direction, then what we do is we laminate. And the laminate is simply a collection of lamina that are glued together. Actually, they are manufactured together most of the time. So you don't have to actually glue them. They come out glued. Um, but then we can decide, you can decide, uh, in which orientation you want to put each lamina. So the orientation is uh, keyed in by the orientation of the fibers. You see here the fibers. And the orientation we call it 1. And in this case, 1 goes along this direction. And the next uh, lamina we put it in this direction and this in this direction. And that way, you optimize the behavior of the material. And with that material, then you optimize the behavior of the structure in a subsequent step. Okay, so the next uh, thing we have to think about is uh, what loads are we going to apply. And uh, loads are usually shell loads because uh, uh, even though, well, the laminates are thin, the laminates are also thin. So most composites are relatively thin structures. So they are better described by shells, curved shells or flat plates. So the loads will be shell loads, which are a particular type of loads that we have, entered into, we have to enter into the software. And also we enter temperature because temperature creates thermal stress. And we enter moisture because moisture uh, uh, produces um, moisture expansion. So we have to take that, those things into account. So next, uh, we go more into the software. The software is designed uh, using the um, concept of objects. So we look at the real objects in, in reality, like say fibers are objects which exist. And we mimic those objects into the computer. Here we have my fibers. A matrix, we have my matrix. The lamina, it is an object that you can make. Put fiber and matrix together, cure the polymer, then you got a lamina. Lamina goes into my laminas. Laminates is a collection of laminas that you can make and it goes into my laminates. And the shell loads, although they are not exactly physical objects, but they are things that happen in reality, so we model them with objects as well. And we have membrane and bending load. These are the shell loads. Shell go load will, will be here. Uh, if we do beams, but that will be section loads. Um, and so there are various things that I have to explain. And then also we consider the environment to be a load. That is, we put a temperature, and we put a moisture ch change, and that becomes a load, and that goes into my environment. Now, this thing that you see here on the right, we call it the tree. And the tree is what we use to navigate the software so we get what we want. All right, so finally, uh, what all we have to do is to click here, and we click, click here, then we go to the site. And once we go to the site, the first thing we have to do is we have to, um, uh, here's the site. Uh, once we go to the site, the first thing we have to do is we have to get an account. And uh, I'm going to stop this video now, and I'm going to make a separate video, which is going to start right here. And it's going to show you how to sign up for an account, all the process. And after that, then make more videos to illustrate all the features of the application. And with that, uh, thank you very much.